Welcome to MRV TV Studio. I'm Rob Williams. With us in studio today is Al Vecchioni. He's the founder of the Francis Foundation as well as the clinical director there and founder of Amici Associates. Al, welcome. Oh, thank you, Rob. And you are here today to talk with me about uh, neuromodulation. That's it. Yeah. So you were on um, uh, you were in the studio. Uh, I guess it was a few months ago now, talking about the work that you're doing in community public health in Central Vermont. Yep. And you have an incredible new project that you've been involved with, and you and I have been talking about for a while now. But it, it's um, I don't want to say it's revolutionary, but it, it sure feels that way to me. So maybe. Uh, without further ado, just launch us in here. What are we What are we talking about when we talk about neuromodulation? Well, it's probably a good place to start. Is just what neuromodulation is, yeah. and uh, in neuromodulation, what we do is stimulate the brain with various things like light, sound, and very mild electrical activity to induce some kind of change in the way the brain functions. So it's a very mild and easy to use. Uh, these techniques are very mild and easy to use and easy on the brain and they have very few side effects. Uh, but what we don't realize, generally speaking, is that uh, part of what your brain does uh, in managing your whole body is really uh, run by your electrical system in your brain and not just your neurotransmitters. So uh, when we use medication to help people feel better who are depressed or anxious or can't sleep, there's a whole mess of side effects that uh, people suffer from. And in neuromodulation, we don't see that. Uh, but we can induce the same kind of change. Yeah. We can help people recover from their trauma, uh, recover from their depression, be less anxious, and overall behave better. So you mentioned medication, which is one way to treat um, you know, a, 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 a patient's symptoms, if you will. Um, you were in here talking about body-based techniques, um, waking the tiger. Um, I'm sorry, taming the tiger, waking the possum, yeah. right? The 10 different body-based techniques, which um, you and I had d been doing some storytelling work on. So we have um, medication, we have body-based techniques, number two, but this is a third kind of approach. Is that fair neuromodulation generally is kind yeah. of a third approach to public health? And uh, You know, so I've heard people say this who are much more educated and, and uh, have more information about it. It's the new psychiatry. Really? It's what will happen with psychiatry in the future. Wow. Uh, you know, Daniel Amen, who's a very well-known psychiatrist, uh, and he's done 83,000 brain scans. Wow. He says that psychiatrists are the only medical specialty that don't look at the organ they treat. I saw, he gave a TED Talk about this, right? Yeah. I, saw, yeah. I think you recommended I watch it. Yeah, that was fascinating. Yeah. So we can look at the electrical activity, and that's really what I'm going to talk about today. Nice. Is, is really four things. Mm -hmm. So first of all, uh, how does the brain function? Mm. The brain is an electrochemical organ. Mm. It's not just a neuro organ, mm. right? Yeah. Uh, and so I want to talk a little bit about the chemical side of stuff. Mm. Um, brain waves. Uh, we can read these things in people's minds and they can tell us a lot about how people function. Mm. Um, we recently had a consult with uh, the inventor of the device we use mm. and it, he did it, we did an EEG together on this young lady and after the EEG he went back and did some computer work with it and created some brain maps and he was able to tell us in great detail exactly how the kid behaves and exactly why and which leads us to what do we do about it. And this is Dave Seaver. This is Dave Seaver. And he had never met this kid but based on the EEG, EKG? EEG. EEG. Brain map. Brain map. He was able to predict her behavior without ever having met her with, with almost stunning and complete accuracy. Stunning and okay. complete accuracy. Yeah. And insight into what we can do for her. Right. 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 So there are psychosocial things, you know, ways we interact with her. There's medication, uh, but there's neuromodulation. Nice. And again, neuromodulation, the research says it can do all of these things. Right. Um, so it's got good backing in terms of its clinical use, and uh, it's easy and efficient and really inexpensive compared to most other uh, interventions. Wow, it's amazing. So, yeah, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. And you brought a deck with you, a slide deck. Yes, I brought a bunch of slides because what I want to do is just, again, provide the basics. Yeah. Yeah. Electrochemical organ, how does it operate? Mm -hmm. Brain waves, uh, how do they operate? Mm -hmm. How do we measure them? Let's take a look at some of the EEG mm -hmm. stuff and then take a, a very cursory look at these different techniques audio-visual entrainment, 
transcranial electrostimulation and transcranial DC stimulation, just to get some yeah. basic ideas. And I think with this introductory slideshow, you should be able to go and get uh, understand some of the more sophisticated presentations that don't explain EEG or brain maps or stuff like that. Yeah, I've, I've seen some of those presentations. There's a lot of um, assumptions made about what people know and yeah. don't know. So uh, thanks for breaking it down for the layperson. So um, the website, neurovt.com, for people who want more information, they can go there. So it, you'll see that there's a, a, an icon for audiovisual entrainment, cranial electrostimulation, and transcranial DC stimulation. Under each of those, there's a bibliography of the research on Fantastic. that particular technique, yeah. a description of it, and uh, some clinical examples. And we should say that you are a doctor, but you also are an artist, right? <laughs> you, you, you are responsible for these drawings. Yes. Okay. I couldn't get a responsible artist to do them, so I did them <laughs> myself. I think Julie and I and others agree that we really like them. So, oh, Well, you. should we jump right in? Yeah. Okay. So let, let's start with the electrochemical brain. So the brain's an electrochemical organ that communicates and does its work through both electricity and neurochemicals or neurotransmitters. Mm -hmm. And we focus most of our attention when we try to help people improve from these various disorders on the neurochemical portion of the program. And we almost completely ignore the electrical mm -hmm. part. Mm -hmm. So uh, I want to give you just the basics here. So chemical messengers operate in uh, spaces between the neurons that are called synapses. Mm -hmm. And when we manipulate uh, with medication those neurotransmitters, we're really manipulating the activity at the end of the neuron, mm -hmm. how it's released into the synapse, and then how much is available and all those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. uh, the electrical system um, operates quite differently. Uh, if you think about the beginning of the neuron, right, the dendrite, all those fingers, um, that's where the charge begins. It comes down the axon body to the vesicles at the end of the, uh, at the terminal axon, mm -hmm. and it releases that electrical uh, potential, releases mm -hmm. neurotransmitters into the synapse, into that space. So information inside the neuron is all electrical, and actually between some of the neurons is electrical as well. Isn't there like a jumping that happens? Uh, or maybe that's just a metaphor, but. Uh, it doesn't, well, in some of, in some of the neurons, they're, they're very close and they can actually pass an electrical signal. Most of them, uh, they're passing a neurochemical signal. Okay. Okay. So it's released at the end of the neuron based on the action potential electrical signal that goes through the neuron, then that, uh, bonds to the next neuron wow. and either induces change or calms the neuron or gets it, excites it, gets it to fire. Yeah. Now that's helpful. So there's neuro, uh, neuro um, chemical and electrical information. All work together. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah. All right. So, and well. you'll see this is it. The action potential mm -hmm. uh, is started in the neuron, goes to the end of, mm -hmm. of that same neuron, uh, triggers a release of neurotransmitter into that little space mm -hmm. called the synapse which then either induces a state of excitation or calm mm. in the next neuron. Mm. So That's cool. basically it. Uh, when we uh, take medication, what we attempt to do is manipulate that amount of neurotransmitter, either in the synapse, the release into the synapse, the reuptake. So if you take something uh, like Prozac, uh, uh, it's a serotonin-specific reuptake inhibitor. Mm. What that means is that once the serotonin electrical current goes down, mm serotonin gets released, the capacity for that neuron to pick that serotonin back up and bring it in is blocked. So more serotonin just sits in that synapse, which down-regulates the receptors on the next neuron. And so, although people don't completely understand it, I think they, they have a pretty uh, belief more than anything that that's the way it is. That's operates. what's going on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Electrical signals, of course, are completely different. Uh, when we, when we stimulate the brain with electricity, we, we temp attempt to change things mm. by manipulating that electrical signal. Mm. And again, sights, sounds, lights, uh, and I'll explain more of that on the audiovisual yeah. end, and electrical signals will do that for us. That's fantastic. Um, so when we decide to give people medication, what we do is look at a cluster of behaviors or symptoms. Mm. So if you're depressed, you have a foggy mind, uh, you can't sleep, uh, mood is depressed, all those kinds of things. Uh, very general. Mm -hmm. There are very few psychiatric disorders that don't have some overlap, right. right? And things like trauma are often not really addressed very well. 
uh, in the DSM or wherever. So we look at symptoms. We don't look at the organ we need to treat. Right. Right. Back to the D back to Dr. Daniel Amen. Dr. Daniel's uh, observation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so when we when we uh, use uh, neuromodulation, what we do is actually look at the brain. We look at the EEG of the brain. Right. We look at the graph of all the activity, electrical activity uh, in the neurons. And then we can take that, and I'll show you this in a minute, we yeah. can take that and turn it into a brain map, which f feeds us much more information. It seems like a powerful, powerful tool. It really is. So let's talk a little bit about brain waves. So uh, brain waves are really coordinated electrical activity in the brain. Um, this, these graphs are not of a single neuron, mm. but of cl large clusters, maybe even in the billions of neurons at specific sites in the brain. And so when a bunch of neurons fire together, they create a brain wave. So when we use the term brain wave, what we're talking about is clusters of neurons exhibiting patterns of activity that we can then measure. We can capture yeah. with the EEG, yeah. graph them, uh, and then create brain maps gotcha. from that information. Uh, so the uh, br brain waves, really, uh, you can look at two features of brain waves. One is the frequency mm. of the brain mm -hmm. wave, and the other is the amplitude. Okay. Okay. How 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 wide big the wave or is? Narrow or, yeah. yeah. Okay. So frequency is how many uh, you can go on there. Yeah, sure. Uh, so brain waves have uh, frequencies per second or mm. cycles per second that they fire. Mm. That's called hertz. Mm. So you take something like alpha. Uh, and we'll get into that more in a second, but alpha waves are about 10 cycles per second. Uh, okay. So you can actually look at, look on your EEG at a one second, what they call epoch, and you can count the waves. Wow. And it can tell you exactly what kind of brain wave is firing uh, at that site on your brain, mm -hmm. uh, which is really important information because different, different wavelengths, different brain waves, force to very different mm -hmm. states of arousal and very different behavior. Wow, super cool. Uh, ah. So, if you think about amplitudes, right. uh, the amplitude is the amount of electric electrical activity. Mm -hmm. It's measured in microvolts that's happening at that particular brain wave. Okay. Um, and what you see is, if you go on, what you'll see is that um, the higher the brain wave, or the, the higher the frequency mm -hmm. of the brain wave, the lower the amplitude. Uh. So very slow waves like delta, uh -huh. um, and <laughs> delta will fire somewhere between say 0.5 and 3 cycles per second, mm -hmm. which means if you go on the EEG, you can count uh, yeah. 1, 1. 1.5, 2, you know, just how many. Yeah. The amplitude is high. Okay. It's got a lot more electrical power to it. Right. And as the frequency increases, as you go from delta to theta to alpha to beta, huh. you'll see the amplitude shrink uh, and the frequency uh, of those waves increase. Okay. And we're looking at 5... Five general, band. general bands, okay. Yeah. Um, ah, it, here we are. Good. So, again, if you think about, start at the bottom, at the slowest mm -hmm. waves with the largest amplitude, that's delta. Okay. Uh, and you're in a delta state when you're sleeping, dreaming, uh, you know, unconscious. Mm -hmm. When you come slightly more activated, you come up into the theta brainwave uh, group, and that's somewhere around three to eight or so. Mm -hmm. Um, it's still high amplitude, considered very low frequency. Delta and theta uh, are when you're asleep or mm -hmm. unconscious or you're not very engaged with the world. Mm -hmm. right? Then we go to alpha. Mm -hmm. Now, alpha is a very relaxed state. It's 8 to 12 mm -hmm. uh, hertz, cycles per second or hertz. Um, it's a little higher. It's, it's very relaxing. It's the state we get into when we meditate. So you meditate over time, and the amount of alpha and the speed at which you create alpha in your brain increases. Okay. Uh, if you close your eyes uh, and you're healthy, you have a healthy, normal brain, you double your alpha. So when you're having that conversation with somebody that's a little challenging, and you just go, uh, maybe you're thinking, maybe you're just trying to calm down. Right. right? And then you go into beta. Okay. And beta is active. Uh, I'm thinking, I'm moving, I'm engaged with the world, I'm talking, I'm doing all of those kind of things. Then, of course, the, the highest band, with, I think, which I think is the one at least I know the least about, is gamma. Mm. And gamma seems to help with the coordination of all the activities mm. in your brain. Wow, amazing. So, 
Uh, we can go to the next oh, yeah. one. Yeah. Um, so there's some, if you think about it, there's some, there's a downside to these yeah. brain waves and your behavior because if they foster, if certain brain waves foster certain behavior, mm -hmm. then uh, if you want certain behavior, you don't have the right brain waves to support them, you can't do it. Right. 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 So uh, if you're in a, we're having this conversation now, uh, we're actively engaged, we're making a lot of beta. Right, um, and that's appropriate because we're going to have this conversation. Um, if I came in here full of delta and theta, I wouldn't be able to have the conversation. Right. I would be too fogged out. You'd be passed out on the table. Yeah, <laughs> close to <laughs> yeah. passed out right. or quite disengaged. Right. So we see lots of people with, for example, things like ADHD, who are pretty disengaged. Yeah. Yeah. You look at the research on ADHD. The problem is their frontal lobes are fogged out with right. delta and theta. So, so we can actually map uh, certain kinds of uh, human behavior to different brain waves and then develop a diagnosis and a treatment based on our understanding of this. It's fascinating. Yeah, w w what's really fascinating is you may not even need the diagnosis anymore. Mm -hmm. Because the brain wave So you, reading, you, treat, you treat the brain will, wave. Will tell us, yeah. Uh, we're now making diagnoses based on clusters of symptoms. Wow. Not very exacting, Yeah. right? But if I look at your brain or I look at my brain and I say, wow, this is nothing but fog here, yeah. I can call that ADHD if I want, but I can increase your alpha and beta in that area and improve your behavior a whole lot. You're not fogged out. I could call you ADHD, but not right. particularly useful. Right. Uh, right. Much more important to look at the organ wow. and what's happening up there. That's awesome. So uh, it just uh, in addition, mm -hmm. you know, so I need beta to have this conversation. Mm -hmm. If I come here with delta or theta, we don't have this conversation. Uh, if I'm going to bed and I want to go to sleep and I got lots of delta theta, I'm going to pass out. Mm -hmm. If I go to bed in a beta state, I'm going to sit there and worry and think for a very long time before I can get myself down through alpha into theta and beta. So it, it supports whatever kind of behavior right. we, we would like. Right, right. So, That's amazing. So this is uh, yeah. an idea that, you know, how, how do you measure these brain waves? And this can be, it's, it's fairly simple, as complicated as it is, it's fairly simple. You put some kind of electrodes on your brain, mm -hmm. uh, you hook that up to an amplifier, which amplifies uh, that activity, mm -hmm. then you process it through a computer, mm -hmm. and the computer creates a graph uh, of the activity. So um, what you'll see is that there, are, this is called the, the 1020 model. Mm -hmm. There's 19 spots on your head, and they come sort of in bands, mm -hmm. the middle band here, back, forward, frontal poles, and uh, occipital region. Mm -hmm. And th this is not critical uh, for people to, uh, to know, but basically we can map a spot in your brain. We can look at the brainwave activity in that particular spot, mm -hmm. and we can also treat the brainwave activity in that particular mm -hmm. spot. Mm -hmm. So we, we, what gets generated from that, those electrodes that are hooked to the amplifier is basically a graph of the activity, both in terms of amplitude and frequency. And again, you can count the frequency so you know the brain wave. Mm -hmm. You can see unusual activity in the brain mm -hmm. and all of those kinds of things. And uh, if you go to the next mm -hmm. one, it's, it's hooked to a specific spot, right? So if CZ is this spot in the middle uh, of my head, uh, yeah. there's a CZ spot on the graph, and I can say, ah, this is the activity right here. Right. So the this series of... Um uh, frequencies and measurements correspond to the, these to the different spots on the nineteen regions. Yeah. The nineteen spots, nice. correct. Uh, and then, if you're sophisticated mm. enough, <laughs> which I'm probably not, then you can take that EEG data, that graph, and turn it into a brain map. Mm. And what's beautiful about the brain map is you can look at different frequencies, mm. the activity across your entire brain. Mm -hmm. So if you look at uh, <clears throat> Uh, this this particular mm -hmm. graph, you see, in the theta range, we have lots of theta activity mm -hmm. in the, through the middle of the brain. Uh, if we're trying to have a conversation, that's not a good thing. Right. If you're trying to go to sleep, that's fine. Yeah. Right. Uh, but we have lots of people who are carrying using the wrong brain waves at the wrong time. So we can we can take a picture, mm -hmm. look at the brain map, look at the different frequencies, and decide how to treat that person. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah, there's actually, you can go on, but yeah. there's, there's actually, uh, if you look at something like depression, for example, mm -hmm. there are at least five different brain signatures for depression. Uh, 
So do they all respond to the same medication? Right. You know, probably not. If you go in uh, to see a psychiatrist, he's not going to know which one of those organizations right. your brain has without looking at them. The behaviors may be the same, mm. but the brain uh, organization is different. So it allows for a much more specific and accurate and hopefully helpful diagnosis and treatment. Exactly. By, by taking this approach. Yeah. So if you look at, uh, there's a couple of studies that have looked at the brain and looked at medication use. So. Uh, you can pick, based on the brain organization, mm -hmm. if you're going to use medication, certain brain organizations will respond better to certain medications. Mm -hmm. um, and even you can differentiate between what people will uh, profit from medication versus mm -hmm. therapy or mm -hmm. therapy versus medication. So that, that technology yeah. already exists. So, yeah. uh, and on each yeah. of these brain maps, mm -hmm. what you find is there's a scale associated with it. And that tells you um, sort of where they are in terms of the normal range. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a normal database, and uh, we can look at anybody's brain uh, against that normal database right, right. and say, huh, unusual activity here, yeah. huh, unusual activity here, high or low. Right. Uh, and then with our techniques, we can either juice this up or slow this down or whatever we need to do. Nice, nice. Um, and again, here's the hope. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can see in the, in the frontal lobes, of this person on the left, this is before treatment, mm. tons of delta. Right. So if you're walking through life with tons of delta in your frontal lobes, right, in yeah. the front of your brain, you're yeah. not thinking. Right. Well, here's where all your executive function is. Right. Planning, anticipating the future, all of those kinds of things. Without this, you can't do anything. You're literally that. sleepwalking. You're sleepwalking. Through your day. That's a great yeah. analogy. Yeah. Um, and this is post-treatment. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is a neurotherapy uh, treatment. Mm. And you can see the red's gone. Uh, and 20 to 40 treatments, um, you got a completely different brain. You got somebody awake walking through the world. Amazing. Um, so, again, this is mm -hmm. the same thing changing the electro electrical activity in the brain. And the phrase neurofeedback simply refers to the application of these techniques to the brain. Is that right? Or is that neuromodulation a term? Yeah. is a broad term. Okay. Under neuromodulation, is neurofeedback, okay. right. audiovisual entrainment, Got these it. other things. Right. The difference between the techniques that we have here, mm -hmm. audiovisual entrainment, transcranial DC, and cranial electrostimulation, and neurotherapy, is that these techniques, which I'll talk about in a mm -hmm. minute, are not only fairly simple, but inexpensive. Nice. So if you go to a neurotherapist today, mm -hmm. which is a great treatment, I, you know, mm -hmm. I'm very positive about neurotherapy, mm -hmm. uh, you're gonna pay between $100 and $150 an hour, um, you're going to be in a room with a professional, mm -hmm. neurotherapist who knows how to do this, mm -hmm. and, um, and it's going to take somewhere between 40 and 100 treatments at roughly 100 to $150 an hour yeah. Yeah. Uh, because you've got to train professionals sitting yeah. at the desk with the computer and all the stuff, mm -hmm. and um, you're going to get good results, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not covered by insurance. Right. So most of the people I know can't spend $15,000 to get better, yeah. right? Uh, so these techniques are very inexpensive. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll talk more about yeah. this, but yeah. the way we're using it now is you can actually send these, these machines home with people. Wow. Well, so Yeah, let's get there. That's awesome. So let's start with uh, yeah. oh, good. audio visual yeah. entrainment. Okay. AVE. A -V -E. Yeah, it kind of got lost. So if you, if you go back one, yeah. you see the picture is what's important here. Ah. So, it's a set of glasses, mm -hmm. there's many different ways to do this, but a set of glasses with the equipment we use, mm -hmm. and a set of headphones. Mm -hmm. And you feed light at a certain frequency mm -hmm. and sound at a certain frequency mm -hmm. to the brain. Mm -hmm. And uh, your brain is uniquely set up to entrain to whatever frequency is pumped at it. Mm -hmm. So in three or four minutes, suppose I'm pumping alpha at you, 10 hertz, what in three or four minutes? Your brain is up. I've increased the alpha in your brain. Right. You got all kinds of alpha going on. So your brain literally responds within minutes to the entrainment category by Ex by yeah. mirroring it essentially, or, or exactly. recalibrating. Is that whatever you want to call uh, it? Wow. Uh, you, uh, I bring people in, and typically they're uh, most of the people I deal with have high, uh, high uh, problems with high arousal, hmm. like they're activated. Mm -hmm. Right, and so you bring them in, and they're like, "Can I do? Can I do cut? Well, what's you know, mm -hmm. all of this kind of activity?" They do a twenty-minute or thirty-minute session. They come out and they say, 
okay, <laughs> can we? Right. You know, it so really slows them down. Sl brings their yeah. arousal right down. Wow. Now, what, the other thing about audiovisual yeah. entrainment jump. is, yeah, yeah, you can chop. Sure. Um, so, one of the interesting points is that this is the first study on audiovisual entrainment. It's 1934. Adrian and Matthews. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's 90, almost 90 years, mm -hmm. and we're not using these wow. things that we right. know a lot about. Right. Uh, and again, I'm not, I don't want to quite understand why, mm -hmm. but there's a study from 91 on audiovisual entrainment that uh, for PTSD, which is a really difficult thing to treat, mm -hmm. um, they had really great success. Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. It really hasn't gone anywhere. Yeah. I mean, you don't hear people talking about audiovisual yeah. entrainment or these neuromodulation techniques. That is curious. Yeah. Hmm. Personally, I don't understand it. I mean, uh, neurotherapy has its own journal. It's, there's plenty of books written about mm -hmm. it. Uh, very bright people doing it. Some of the brightest people in the world. Mm -hmm. And insurance won't pay for it. Mm -hmm. it. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and in Vermont, you know, unfortunately, and this may be true in other places as well, it's not really all that available. Right. right. So uh, we were able to track some people down who did it and hard to get in. And, mm -hmm. Um, you know, difficult for people to get, it, and, and again, very expensive. Right. So, yeah. headphones, mm -hmm. goggles, and uh, a little so, piece of equipment. It's about the size of a CD player. Wow. So this is the unit, right? If, yeah. Uh, goggles here, headphones. Uh, the clips go on your fingers? The clips we'll talk about okay. next. So yeah. audio-visual entrainment yeah. is just the headphones Got and it. goggles. Okay. Light, sound. Got it. Okay. All right. So... Uh, <laughs> That's my youngest grandson yeah. uh, with his light therapy light over him, and he's laying on the couch in my house. Uh, the point of this slide is it's so portable. Yeah. It's so portable. Yeah. You don't have to go to a doctor's office every day and get it. Right. You know, so what we, our current practice is to get people in, mm -hmm. do some kind of evaluation, potentially do a brain map, an EEG, uh, look at their brain, see what they, we think they need. And we've done it both ways, both with the brain maps and just with mm -hmm. sort of symptom profile. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we do a treatment. If people uh, have a positive effect from the treatment, then we send them home with the machine, with a journal, mm -hmm. with their providers or mm -hmm. people they're with, and uh, they do it for a week. Then they come back in a week and we make an adjustment. We may uh, make it a longer treatment, mm -hmm. may slightly change the frequency. Um, there's lots of different things you can do with this. Right. There's about 25 different programs wow. on the machine. Wow. Uh, but you come in once a week, you get your treatment, then you get your treatment every day. Right. right. So I have a kid we went through uh, a series of treatments with, and she is a very challenging kid, wonderful kid, mm -hmm. but, but challenged by her experience. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, she's been, she really took to it, mm -hmm. um, and she's been doing it twice a day. Uh, for probably three months now. Mm -hmm. uh, she's never been this successful in her whole life. Mm -hmm. Her arousal just doesn't run away on her anymore. Wow. She's able to stick with really painful things and right. talk about them and express them, wow. whereas before she was either run away or shut down. So you've literally helped her retrain her brain to be more oh, adaptive yeah. and resilient and yeah. amazing. All right, so let's talk a little bit about cranial, I don't know what happened to the slides, but cranial electric stimulation. And then if you go one more, mm -hmm. uh, it's the clips. Ah, okay. So the clips go on, on your, your ears. ears. Okay, the lobes. On the lobes. You, you yeah. wet your ears, you put these little clips on, you turn uh -huh. the machine on. And we use the audio-visual and the cranial electric stimulation at the same uh, time. Okay. Uh, just to see how noticeable it was, uh, uh, I put them on in the uh, airport and I walked around for an hour with them mm -hmm. on, with the machine on. To see how people would respond. <laughs> how'd that go? Nobody noticed. Really? Okay, it looks like headphones. I was going to say, everyone's wearing everyone's something. Everyone's got head something. Now, yeah. so, so, wow. uh, so it's extremely portable. Yeah. You know, you're going to, uh, you're going to for a ride to Burlington, yeah. which is 30 minutes from here, you can put the clips on in the phone, uh, in the car, mm -hmm. on your way up there. Right. Get your body really relaxed. And what um, cranial electric stimulation does, it helps with the networks in your brain. Mm -hmm. So the central part of your brain here is called the default mode network, mm -hmm. and, and the, the, it's over the singular yeah, right here. Singular, yeah. yeah, so what it does is organize all of the systems in your brain. Uh, so cranial electric stimulation, very mild electric current, you can't feel right. it, and it uh, helps to organize all the systems in your brain. Nice. In addition to that, there's a recent study that says it decreases del delta theta. Uh, 
and increases uh, alpha and beta. So it kind of sharpens up your awareness a bit. Yeah. Uh. And uh, it's actually approved by the FDA for anxiety, depression, mm -hmm. and um, insomnia. Mm -hmm. Nice. So if you go to the next one, yeah. I, I, I was forced to put in at least one study. <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm not going to tell you much about the study, yeah. except that, and the point here is that the side effect profile for something like cranial electrostimulation mm. is very, very low. Mm. So you, some of the things you see is drowsiness, blurred vision, mm. dizziness, and headache, mm. but at very low levels. So in this study, there was a sham group and there was an action group, mm. an active group. Mm -hmm. Active group had the headphone, uh, the clips on, and they turned the machine on. The sham group, they just put the clips on uh, and never turned the machine on. Uh, or they, they turned a switch on the machine that made it light up. Is that up. sort of like a placebo kind of? It's, it's the same. What's the, the difference sense? between right. placebo right. and active treatment? Right. And uh, the people who got the sham treatment, which is just putting two clips on your ears because yeah. nothing's turned on. <laughs> right. They had a much higher incidence of uh, headaches than the other group. So mm -hmm. some of this, uh, you know, it's, it's all mild and fleeting. Mm -hmm. And if you think of something like Prozac, the side effect profile is huge, or yeah. any of these medications, right. Right. you know. So here we have something that works, got mm -hmm. the research on it, it's fairly benign, mm -hmm. it can't hurt you, mm. it can just help. Mm. Nice. So that's why I had to put that in. Yeah, that's great. Um, so transcranial DC mm. stimulation. So a uh, note on the other two first. So cranial electrostimulation should work in your whole brain. Mm -hmm. uh, Audiovisual entrainment, you can actually, you can work your whole brain. You can give the same signal to both sides, mm -hmm. but you can give one signal to this side and one signal to this side, really? if you like. Wow. So if you have something like depression, uh, there's a study from 99 on this guy, Richie Davidson, and what he found, and has become one of the signatures for depression, that low activity here mm. and high activity here is what depression looks like in terms of brain waves. Mm. So with this audiovisual equipment, you can feed higher frequencies to this side wow. to sort of get it up wow. and lower frequencies right. to the other side. Right. So there's a little bit more flexibility with audiovisual entrainment. Uh, transcranial DC stimulation works quite a bit differently uh, than the others, but you can focus on particular points in the brain. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you have very low functioning here, you can place one of the pads here and one somewhere else, and I can increase the activity in, your, in the neurons in your brain in this area. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't actually get them to fire, but it polarizes them either in a positive or negative way. So if you go to the next yeah. one, you'll see there's anodes and cathodes. There's two of these uh, pads. And if you have an area in your brain, you want to increase the activity. So again, if you look at the depression profile and you see low activity here, you can put your anode here mm -hmm. and that will increase the activity in that part of your brain mm -hmm. and make it more excitable. But um, if you're thinking about people who have trauma, one of the areas that are difficult for them is the temporoparietal area back here, T4, P4. And you could actually put the cathode here, lower that activity which seems to be uh, emanating from your fe the fear center, your amygdala. Right. So we can measure it and see it here. Right. You treat that with a, with a cathode, you lower the activity, you lower the fear, and you increase right. uh, the activity here. So transcranial DC gives you kind of the most localized control? The most focused. Wow. Yeah, the That's most amazing. focused. And there's other things. There's, there's transcranial AC, and there's lots more neuromodulation techniques. Uh, we've chosen the simplest uh, and easiest to use that had good research behind them. Mm -hmm. nice. So that's about it. That's fantastic. Um, well, thank you for talking with us today. Again, the website is neurovt. Neurovt.com. Yeah. Right. Um, Dr. Al Vecchioni. <laughs> Thank thanks you, for uh, thanks for all your good work. And um, oh, one last question. Yeah. Um, we, you and I, had talked um, not too long ago about this idea of a community mm -hmm. clinic. Is that yeah. something you, you might want to mention here? As we wrap up or no? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, so uh, one of, when we talked about the body-based techniques, we talked about uh, acupuncture. Mm -hmm. Well, acupuncture is a fabulous technique to be used for all kinds of uh, problems, disorders, activities, you know, syndromes, whatever. Um, and it has some of the same problems as neurotherapy. So if you go to a typical acupuncturist, mm -hmm. you're going to pay $100 to $150 right. an hour 
probably not covered by insurance, although some insurance cover it. And it's a medical model. So uh, I'll see you next Tuesday at 10 o'clock. Right. Right. So what, what happened probably around the year 2000 is they started a community acupuncture mm -hmm. movement. And now there are these walk-in clinics where an acupuncturist won't be with one person for an hour. They'll, be, they'll treat six or seven or maybe right. even eight people at the same time in the clinic. Right. Right. Um, it's very inexpensive mm -hmm. and it's very available. Mm -hmm. So right now, mm -hmm. if you don't feel well right. and you need a treatment, you just walk over to the clinic and go in and get a treatment. You don't have to wait till next Tuesday or whenever. Yeah. And the treatment costs somewhere between 15 and $25. Mm -hmm. So it's very affordable. Um, the idea is to bring these kinds of treatments uh, to everyone. Uh, yeah. So for the same kind of thing, you could do neuromodulation with a number of people at the same time. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I recently spoke with our acupuncturist about sharing his clinic um, and maybe using it, uh, you know, the, he's, he's in there about 20 hours a week. Mm -hmm. We could be in there about 20 hours a week. Wow. And, uh, you know, again, very inexpensive. You, gotta, you have a kid at school who's having a hard day, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you could put him in timeout. Um, you could take something away from him. You can throw him out of school or you could run him over to the clinic and get a 15-minute treatment. Mm -hmm and bring them back to school and help them re-engage. Wow. So that's the way I'm thinking about it. That seems like a better approach. It does seem <laughs> <laughs> better for everybody. Yeah. Better for yeah. everybody. Yeah. Uh, Seabrin Fisher, uh, she's, a, she's a neurotherapist and she does a lot of work with developmental trauma. Mm -hmm. She says uh, neurotherapy, is a, it's a relational therapy. Mm -hmm. It's about improving our state so we can be together, and I think all of these neuromodulation techniques are just that. Yeah, it's really, really neat. You know, it's about being together, being okay, and being together. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, thanks for your uh, thanks for your work on this, and um, I, I look forward to seeing where it goes. All right, thank yeah, you. Sir. You've been listening here at MRV TV to Dr. Al Vecchioni. The website again, neurovt.com. Thank you for listening.